In this video, we'll look at Hess's law. Hess's law states that the heat evolved or absorbed in a chemical reaction is the same whether the reaction takes place in one or in several steps. So let's look at an example using Hess's law. Calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction here, the top equation, given these two equations here along with the enthalpy changes for the reactions. So what you have to look for is, are the correct species on each side of the arrow? Well, the top equation, this is the equation that we're aiming to, to get here. The top equation, the NO, the nitrogen monoxide, is on the left side of the arrow, whereas on the second equation here, it's on the right side of the arrow. Our NO2, our nitrogen dioxide, is on the right side of the arrow here, and on our third equation at the bottom, it's on the right side of the arrow too. So this equation here, the bottom equation, that looks okay. It's this middle equation that we'll have to change to try and get the nitrogen monoxide on the left side of the arrow. So what I've done, I've put this equation at the top there, and we won't have to worry about this equation at all. Now this middle equation, what I've done to this equation is I've reversed it. So you can see we now have two NO arrow, and that's going to make nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So because I've reversed this equation, I've also reversed the enthalpy change. It was positive 180.5 kilojoules. It's now negative 180.5 kilojoules. So the next step is to cancel out the species that appear on both sides of the arrow. So for the top two equations, that is. So here we have an N2, and that's going to cancel with that N2. Here we have an O2, and here we have 2O2, so that's just going to become 1O2, okay, 1O2 there. And nothing else cancels. And let's just check, the, this is the equation that we're aiming for on the bottom. So we have 2NO, we have plus O2, so we have the 1O2 there that's gone down to there. And then we still have that 2NO2, which is here. So what we do now is we add up these enthalpy changes. Remember, I reversed the sign on this one. So it's positive 66.4 kilojoules plus, and you have to put that in brackets, of course, negative 180.5 kilojoules. And the enthalpy change for this reaction is negative 114.1 kilojoules. So let's try one more example using Hess's law. So consider the two reactions involving iron and oxygen, these two reactions here. What is the enthalpy change in kilojoules for this reaction below here? So the first thing we have to do is we have to have a look if the species are the correct side of the arrows. And we can see that in the top equation here, this FeO, this iron oxide, is on the... Um, right side when it should be on the left side okay so what I've done I've flipped or reversed this equation here and don't forget the enthalpy change as well it was negative 544 kilojoules it's now positive 544 kilojoules okay another thing is that this has the final equation has four FeO we only have two so what we have to do, we have to multiply the whole equation by 2. So that gives us 4FeO and then 4Fe plus 2O2. And I'm going to put a line through that equation now because we're now finished with that equation there. But also I have doubled the enthalpy change from 544 to 1,088 kilojoules. Next we have the second equation. We don't need to change this equation because all the species... Uh, especially the Fe203, that's on the right side of the arrow here, and it's on the right side of the arrow in our final equation, so we don't need to change that equation at all. So what we do next is we cancel out what's the same on each side of the arrow, so those four Fe's there and those four Fe's there, they cancel. We have 2O2 on this side, which cancels out the three, so that leaves us with one there. So we'll just check, we have four FeO, 1O2, and then on the right side we have 2Fe2O3. So our final equation is correct, and then we add these together. 1,088 plus negative 1,648, and that gives us the 
enthalpy change of negative 560 kilojoules. Next we'll have a look at an enthalpy cycle. In this enthalpy cycle we have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and if we go this route they are combining to form um, ethanol. This is ethanol C2H5OH. And then we're burning the ethanol with oxygen and the products if you follow this arrow are going to be carbon dioxide and water. So if we go this way first of all we are forming ethanol from its um, elements and then we're combusting ethanol with oxygen to give us these products here. The anti-clockwise route, we're combusting each one of these, so we're combusting the carbon with oxygen, we're combusting the hydrogen with oxygen, and then we're adding up the enthalpy changes to give us this total here. So we know the delta H2, which is burning the ethanol and oxygen to give us these products, and we know burning each one of these individually, we can add these together to give us this value here. So if we know delta H3 and we know delta H2, then we can calculate delta H1. So down here I've got the um, calculations. So basically if you follow the arrow, this big arrow here, we can say that delta H1 plus delta H2 equals delta H3. Well, we want to know delta H1. So I can take delta H2 over the um, equal sign to the other side, and that gives us the second calculation here. Delta H1 equals delta H3 minus delta H2. And if we plug in the values here, we end up with delta H1, and that equals negative 279 kilojoules per mole.